Hi there, Thomas Kissinger. I want to bring you another fabulous testimony uh, about someone who was able to see the ultimate salvation of all mankind through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is someone that you may have heard of. Well, of course you have. His name is Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he lived from 1809 to 1865, United States president and really my favorite U.S. president, and for many reasons, and you add this into the mix, and uh, it just makes me love him even more that he was able to see this, and he went out on a limb and uh, made direct statements about this as well. So let's read this. I'm getting this information from Gary Amaralt's website, tentmaker.org, and if you haven't been to Gary's website, visit his website, a uh, tremendous website devoted to the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Savior of all. But let's read this information about Abraham Lincoln. The Religion of Abraham Lincoln. Many may know that Abraham Lincoln was one of our most deeply religious presidents. Very few know how well he knew the scriptures even better than some of the most prominent clergy of his day. Almost no one knows that he believed in the doctrine of universal salvation. Here are a few examples taken from the Almost Chosen People by William J. Wolfe. And it goes on to say here, One of Lincoln's associates, Mentor Graham, tells of Lincoln, He took the passage... As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, and followed up with the proposition that whatever the breach or injury of Adam's transgression to the human race was, which no doubt was very great, was made just and right by the atonement of Christ. That's on page 47 of that book. Here's another passage here. Lincoln wrote an essay about 1833 on predestinated universal salvation and criticism of the orthodox doctrine of endless punishment. It is also consistent with the evidence that in 1850, Lincoln, through the reading of his pastor's The Christian's Defense and his own wrestling with the problem, became convinced intellectually of the validity of the biblical revelation. Lincoln's conviction that God would restore the whole of creation as the outcome of Christ's atonement would have been in itself a bar to membership in the Springfield Church he attended. That was pages 103 through 104, uh, where you find that. Here's another passage. Another associate, Isaac Cogdell, tells of a discussion on religion in Lincoln's office in 1859. Lincoln expressed himself in about these words. He did not nor could not believe in the endless punishment of any one of the human race. He understood punishment for sin to be a Bible doctrine, that the punishment was parental in its object, aim, and design, and intended for the good of the offender. Hence it must cease when justice is satisfied. He added that all that was lost by the transgression of Adam was made good by the atonement. All that was lost by the fall was made good by the sacrifice. Page 104. Here's another passage here. The second statement was one dictated by Jonathan Harnett of Pleasant Plains, describing a theological discussion in 1859 in Lincoln's office. Lincoln covered more ground in a few words than he could in a week and closed with the restitution of all things to God as the doctrine taught in the scriptures. And if anyone was left in doubt in regard to his belief in the atonement of Christ and the final salvation of all men, he removed those doubts in a few questions he answered and propounded to others. After expressing himself, some one or two took exceptions to his proposition, and he asked a few questions that concerned his interrogators and left no one to doubt or question 
His soundness on the atonement of Christ and salvation finally of all men. He did not pretend to know just when that event would be consummated, but that it would be the ultimate result that Christ must reign supreme high over all, the Savior of all, and the supreme ruler. He could not be one out of the fold. Um, he could not be with one out of the fold. I'm sorry. All must come in with his understanding of the doctrine taught in the scriptures. So we see here that Abraham Lincoln um, is quoted as having believed this. People with uh, him and discussions with him in his very office. Uh, he took this passage, In Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And then he understood and uh, spoke on the purpose of biblical punishment by God, that God is our Father, that God is a parent, and that uh, the ultimate goal of punishment is to correct and to restore. That is one of the main things we need to see about God. The purpose of punishment, the length of punishment, and we need to see this ultimate triumph of the atonement of Jesus Christ. The atonement, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Was it a success or was it a failure? And, you know, many people talk about the free will and the free moral agency of man. What about the free will of God? What does God want to do? Does God succeed in what he wants to do? What is God's desire? Well, the scriptures teach that God's desire is to save all. Well, does he have the power, the love, and the free will to do that? Or is man's choices in free will stronger than God? Well, that would be ridiculous. And so God then in his great power, love, and wisdom factors in man's choices and uh, man's will. But God in his ultimate power and love has designed a plan to overcome and win all in the end through this great atonement. You know, in Adam all die. Well, that was really powerful, the fall of man. Well, in Christ, all shall be made alive. I mean, how powerful is that? That's really powerful. Uh, so the atonement of God through his son, Jesus Christ, is so powerful, it is going to bring about a universal triumph, a universal salvation. And I've always loved Abraham Lincoln. I think he's one of our greatest presidents and just, you know, embrace this information and just realize that he was one of the ones down through history who saw this universal salvation of all through Jesus Christ. And he had enough guts to talk about it. So hallelujah. Uh, thank you. Uh, for listening, and uh, just so glad to bring that testimony to you. Amen.